Hey what's up guys, it is Saiku or Sam here and welcome back to another video guys and today I'm very excited to bring you guys a tutorial of animating in Unity. This is going to be a very very basic tutorial so if you're more to like more advanced tutorials of animating uh, this is probably like I would still suggest you to watch it just because even if you have like a rigged character in your game you're going to be able to implement this system into your game or use the same method which is going to apply to animating anything at all. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you the anime, animation software of Unity, or software, like the window, uh, the toolkit, I guess. And um, with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, make sure to leave a like down below, it really supports me a lot. And also, hit subscribe if you want to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon. And if you have any suggestions for tutorials like more advanced animations, etc., let me know, I can definitely make those videos. And uh, with that being said, let's get started, guys. So. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna make a very, very basic uh, tutorial, like a very basic animation. But I'm also gonna give you guys some examples on how you can apply this to your more advanced characters and more advanced uh, 3D models, meshes, whatever you have. So I'm gonna start off by creating a new game object, a 3D object and a cube. And just to play around with the values a little bit, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer, like that. Um, like like I said though, this is going to be a very basic animation and what I'm gonna say here is I'm gonna say rotating cube so that's what I'm gonna call this object for and next up I want to go to window and I want to open up animation and um, so this is the animation window and we're gonna go through the values uh, or like the tools in just a little um, but you can see that first and foremost when you, we open it, it just says to begin animating rotating cube, which is the object name, uh, create an animator and add a, and a uh, animation clip. So basically what this does is that it wants you to add an animator because it's the new system in Unity, but we're going to take a look at the legacy animation system. Um, if you would like to see an animator tutorial by me, let me know in the comments down below. Um, so we're, we're basically going to create, there we go. And we're gonna select a path for this animation file that we're gonna create it. But I definitely want to use the assets folder because that's my uh, primary folder that I use for this video. And um, I want to call this spinning cube animation. There we go. Or like rotating cube, but it doesn't really matter. The animation name doesn't really matter unless you don't remember the name of it. Um, you just have to remember the name of it in, unless you like have a game object field for the animation that you're gonna call from the script. Uh, but that's a little bit more advanced, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, leave a comment and I'll try to explain it a little bit further. Um, so basically, we have a few buttons here, as you can see in the animation window. Uh, I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger so that you guys... Oh, it doesn't really expand the size, but anyway. Um, you can see that we have a record button first. So this is going to be the one that is going to enable keyframe recording mode, as it says. And in simple words, it's basically going to start recording your animation. And when you click it one more time, it's going to stop recording your animation. And then we have a go to the beginning of the animation clip, which literally does what it tells you. Uh, it just goes to the beginning of the animation. So if you're farther away from the, you know, if you have a long animation sequence, it's just going to browse down here. Um, and then we also have a go to previous keyframe. So if you have a keyframe here and then you have a keyframe here and a bunch of keyframes here, you can just simply browse by clicking that button. And um, finally, we also have a play button. So this is going to play the animation itself. And the fancy thing is you don't really have to like save the animation every time you want to play it. It's going to fully preview the animation itself inside of your scene window and the game window. So it's really fancy. Um, you know, a lot of people miss on that uh, from what I've seen. Um, then we also have a, and these buttons are basically the same like these. This is going to go to the uh, last keyframe. This is going to go to the next keyframe. And um, we also have a timeline. So this is going to be the timeline where you're gonna edit your animation. And um, the keyframes are going to appear here. And we also have the name of the animation that we have selected right now. If you have several animations that you have created, if I create a new clip here, I'm going to have this, uh, the list is going to expand by adding the new animation that I add here. Um, we also have the amount of samples, which isn't really that relevant. I don't really like play around with the value that much. Um, it's going to detect by itself automatically. If you just make it like 120, you're going to realize that uh, the timeline changes a little bit, but I don't really play around with that because the regular timing is really, really good. Um, 
and we also have a button to add a keyframe and then we have a button to add event. I actually never ever use these two buttons. I just add the keyframes by rotating or moving my objects inside of my scene window, which I'm gonna show you guys in just a bit. Um, but you can obviously use these keys too. So to start recording your animation, you pretty much just click this button here so that it's grayed out. Um, and you just go to your scene window, select the object you wanna animate, and you just pretty much start you know, moving, rotating, whatever you wanna do. And if you wanna be a little bit more technical, you can also add a property which is going to read off the all these components that are added to the game object so they can enable them at a specific time or disable them, etc. Um, but I don't really want to play around with this right now because I obviously don't have any use for that. I just simply want to have a rotating cube, so that's pretty much it. Um, but to like rotate, what I usually do is I either add a keyframe from here so that I have a starting rotation but to make it easier for myself, I just find it easier to like rotate the object just a little bit, like slightly, and then rotate it back. So this is going to add a starting rotation to the cube. And if you move a little further in the uh, in your timeline, like let's say to, um, this is way too little. Let's see, okay, so let's say, is this one minute? I think I've jumped up too far, far. Uh, let's see, oops. There we go. Let's say we go to five seconds, right? And uh, we just like rotate it in um, this axis. And if you wanna be really specific and you wanna say like, well, I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, you can expand this menu here. And rotation X, you're gonna see that you have a value here. And if you rotate it uh, continuously, you're gonna see the value changes. So you can just click here, write 90, enter, and you're pretty much done. So the fancy thing is, once again, you can play the animation automatically inside of Unity. And you can basically just click on this play button and you can see that it's really fast now because it's at 0.5 seconds. So if I move this further, the keyframe that I recently created, if I move this further to 0.3, let's see how fast that is. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, it's a little bit too fast for me. So I'm gonna move it to 0.5 or like 0, 0.50, there we go, that looks more human. <laughs> um, what I can do is, in order to make it like animate back to its initial rotation, I can basically just highlight this keyframe here at the start, because it's my starting uh, keyframe, and I just hold down Control c basically I copy this, and then I go to like, um, since this is at 0.5, let's say we go to um, what should we do? Like something that is going to be equally far away. Um, let's say like 1.3, I don't know. I'm not really sure about, about the value, but let's say 1.50, okay? Um, or 1.40. <laughs> it's a really, it's a tough decision, all right? So you go to 1.40 and you wanna paste this animation. You just hold down control and you press V. There we go. And now, if you play the animation, you're gonna realize that it comes to this point and then rotates back. So that's a pretty cool feature uh, because it's going to detect automatically like, what was my starting position? Oh yeah, this. So you just copy this and paste it in here and it's going to rotate back automatically. Um, it's a cool feature and um, I like to have it because it makes the animations look really smooth. Because let's say if you had like deleted this keyframe here and you just have these two and you play the animation, you're gonna see that it jumps back and just plays it automatically again, which is a little bit annoying. Like it looks really terrible, right? So you have this keyframe here, which is the starting, uh, the initial rotation. You just have it bounce back like automatically. Oh, now that didn't work. Uh, let's see. I may have copied wrong. There we go. There we go. So you can see that it's now like bouncing back or like uh, animating really smoothly. It's almost like it has a transition in between, even though it doesn't, but that's the kind of cool feature of Unity's animation. Uh, I really like it. So um, that's pretty much the animating part. And in order to like add this animation into your scene, into your game object, uh, once again, we're gonna add the legacy animation. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna close down this. And before you close, I suggest you to click, uh, hold down control and click on S so that you just make sure you Oh, never mind. It's a. Uh, oh, so they fixed it. Okay, so basically, before when you had the animation window opened and um, you clicked Control S, you basically opened up or you just pretty much saved the animation one more time. 
but I guess it saves automatically now all the time, which is kind of cool, but it's like, okay. <laughs> um, so you can just disable the recording and you can still preview the recording as well. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna automatically, sh um, uh, turn on the recording system. So just be careful with when you're like moving your objects inside of your scene, because if you have recording on and you move it, it's going to add a animation clip to it. So yeah, and if you just want to make like an edit to your game object and then come back to recording, uh, just make sure that you're not recording, make the edit and then come back to recording. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to close the animation window now because we already have an animation and you can see that we already have an animator added to our game object, but this is not the legacy system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. So remove the component and I'm going to add a component called animation, all right? So next up, I'm also going to drag the spinning cube animation file that I created inside of my project tab into the animation field inside of my animation uh, component. And if you have several animations to your game object, you can add them simply by uh, unfolding animations. And inside of size, you can just put the number of or the amount of uh, animations you want to have for your game object. So like 10 animations, you write in 10, click OK, and um, that's pretty much it. But I have none. And um, I have none further than this, so I'm not really going to activate that. And now what it's going to do, if we play the game, you're going to realize that it's going to rotate one time. Like, it's going to play the animation one time. And it's not going to, like, continue playing it after a while. So, um, let's see. It doesn't seem to want to go. Let's see. Um, did I do this correctly? Play automatically, yeah. It should be playing automatically. Let's see. Hmm, that's weird. Um, might be that we didn't change. I'm almost sure. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm a little stupid. I'm sorry. So you have to, in order to use the legacy system, in case you want to, you want to go to your animation file, open it inside of the inspector, right click on where it says inspector, literally, and just click on debug. And here you can just take this little checkbox here, which is called legacy. So this is going to make it or turn it into like, or pretty much convert it into a legacy animation. I don't know why that's a feature, but I guess that is. And what I'm going to say now, uh, if you play the game, you're going to realize it's going to, it's going to play the animation file one time and not again. So what you want to do is if you go to your animation file one more time, you're going to have wrap mode. And here it says default, which is going to play it once. Uh, then we also have a feature for once. I don't know why. Default is pretty much once. And we also have loop. So loop is the thing you want to use if you want to obviously create a loop and have it play infinitely. Um, so you can play the game and you're going to see that it's going to loop now. So which is a cool feature. Um, like I said, though, like this is a very basic animation, but I just wanted to make it because a lot of you guys like were asking for it. Uh, because once again, I really care about this interactivity that I have with you guys and I still want to try to reply to all comments that I receive, but it's really difficult, especially now with my new schedule. But I promise you guys that I will try to pro uh, reply to every single comment on this video um, later, latest tomorrow. Like literally, if I receive any comments while I'm sleeping, I'll reply tomorrow. Like I don't care about my timing anymore <laughs> because I don't want to lose the con connectivity with you guys. But um, with that being said, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed and found it helpful. I thought that this was way too basic for, um, like, not really my channel. Like, I don't want to go and brag, like, be like, oh, yeah, my channel is advanced. But at the same time, it's like, did I, like, I'm just a little bit skeptical because I'm not really sure if I made the right kind of tutorial you guys were asking for. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll try to make that video you're asking for. Um, and don't worry about being specific. Like, literally, as like the more you write the more specific you go that's my phone sorry the more specific you go on your suggestions for videos the more happy i become and the, the easier it becomes for me to make the video because i know what you guys want them um i still know what you guys want right now but I, i'm not like 100 percent on how specific you want it to be but this method of the animating window you can pretty much use it for anything like if you're creating a character and you want to you have like a rigged character 3d model and you want to create an animation, you can pretty much use the animation system. Um, you know, it's going to work fine with everything. And even if you're not using the legacy animation system, you can still use the animation window 
to create your animation and it's going to automatically be added with a animator to your game object which is fancy so yeah with that being said guys i hope you all enjoyed and found it helpful if you did make sure to leave a like down below guys it really supports me a lot leave a comment also uh stating what you think of this video if you enjoyed it or not if you have any feedback if you have any suggestions um, any recommendations or suggestions for any videos that you would like to see and also you subscribe in the face guys to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon and i'll catch you guys in the comments down below see you guys peace out bye bye Çalsın artık içimde